So uh, today we're talking Last of Us. Uh, we've all watched five episodes, um, but we're only going to talk about one because so uh, and... <laughs> so, as usual. As you mean like an, any normal podcast would take it episode by episode anyway, I'm just saying. So yeah. I'm yeah. I'm keeping to the form, okay? And I'm late, as always. The world of Last of Us. How are we all finding the show in comparison to the game? We've all played the game, right? We've all, we've all completed the first one. How are we all finding it in comparison to the in, to the the game the show? I mean, so far it's, it's kept pretty straight to the game. Like, there's not they've not deviated from too much. There's like a few things that they've changed here and there, but um, for the most part, it's pretty identical to the game, right? Even like the first episode when she's in the car and you're seeing mm. houses and you see like the. Mm. The, the Miller's Miller's farm or something that's burned mm-hmm. out. You literally like you feel like you're playing the game all over again, but like, it was like a different filter. They've kept like true to the source material, which I really, really, really like. Like we're saying to some of the guys at work. Remember, we were having the discussion like how many games or movies can you think of that have come from a game, TVs or movies, and we couldn't think of any good examples, right? But I think this is like the first. Thing that I've watched that's come from a game that has absolutely fucking nailed it. I can't think of anything that I've seen so far that's been shit. I think it's possibly because even the game was so focused around his characters, yeah. and all they need to do is cast it well and keep it grounded, and they've got a good show. Whereas when they try to make things like the Assassin's Creed movie and stuff like that, they just kind mm-hmm. of they just come and go and fade from memory. I didn't even watch it, so. But yeah. um, yeah, it's it's the world is is really good, and I don't know what it's. I, I wonder what it's like for somebody who hasn't played the game, because knowing what's going to happen and watching that first episode, there's tension from the very beginning, mm-hmm. and then when stuff starts to happen, <laughs> you're just like, oh, oh, that's happening. I yeah. think you just I think. Was yeah, go on. <laughs> no, I was, just, I was saying that to Charlie, exactly what you said. Like, for me, watching the beginning was like slipping in and out of like, I don't know how to put it, like a show coma of sorts. Like, I would get into anticipation, like I've put the game in and I'm walking towards this moment that I know is going to happen. But at the same time, I'd slip into that show moment of, oh, okay, a bit of backstory. Oh, this is, this is cool. This is different. Oh, this is the neighbours. And I kind of fall in to take it. And then all of a sudden, it just snaps in my mind. I'm like, oh, man, she's, she's not going to live. Okay. Yeah. So I was tense the entire time. And because I get to watch it, then play it, I don't have to react. So I just like bawled my eyes out for that first 10 minutes, maybe, or 20 minutes, however long it takes to get there. But um, I found the pacing fucking well, like yeah. really, I don't feel like they missed a beat, but they moved so far. Cause I remember at one point thinking, whoo, must be like almost over now. I checked the time. It was 40 minutes in and there was still half an hour to go. And I was like, Whoa, they've, that was a long episode. Mm. Kind of flew yeah. by, though, to be fair. I found it just flew by. Like, obviously, knowing the story, you kind of jump in the gun a lot anyway. But, like, yeah, it finished. And I was like, oh, that's where they're ending it. Shit, I was fully ready for, like, another hour. <laughs> but I think it's just that kind of story, isn't it? Like, it's a, it's a game where you don't really put the controller down. You just keep going and going and going. So it's weird to just have to stop where you're like, oh, I have to stop. Okay, damn. Like, I would have just carried on. But... Mm. Yeah. What do you find about the uh, the cold open with the um, the the conversation with the interviewer about the uh, the fungus? Uh, like you know, what twenty thirty years oh, ago, yeah. like before at the outbreak. Harmless enough. Many species know otherwise because there are some fungi who seek not to kill, but to control. Let me ask you, where do we get LSD from? Where do you get it from? <laughs> it comes from ergot, a fungus, psilocybin. Also a fungus. Viruses can make us ill, but fungi can alter our very minds. The interview between the two guys is like 1978, and they're yeah. talking about viruses and shit. Um, the guy from The Mummy. Um, yeah. Comedy guy from the comic relief from The Mummy. Jonathan, I think his name was. It was like a very small fragment at the beginning of the first episode. You might have mm-hmm. forgotten it by now. Yeah, and he's just having an interview, and they're talking about like what um, fungus can do in comparison to like uh, a virus and he's like oh if it started attacking humans it's done you know 
I feel like I remember something about that happening. It did happen. I think it, 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 I think it was a. Um, I think it was a very clean way to start off the show, mm. if that makes sense. Because it's not about them, and it's not like it, you know how like it starts off with any world disaster film where they're like, if the world, if the sun increases by two degrees, everything's going to go to shit, and then the rest of the film is just them running away from like an avalanche or something or whatever. I think it was enough for people that hadn't played the games to have that cold start. Like it was, it was formulaic, but it was so short and sharp that it done the job and the rest of it is just very character driven. Then it's about the virus, it's about the infection. That makes mm. sense. Yeah, it's, it's better world building for a show. Um, it's a nice little addition for us, I think. And I think it's probably quite vital for somebody who hasn't played the games to get yeah, invested definitely. in the world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was it was it, it was it was a good um good scene as well because they were just kind of like they they were kind of saying what would the next sort of pandemic be or what would be the worst thing and they were like oh it's not virus it's not bacteria it's fungus and this guy obviously knew all about it mm-hmm. and was just <laughs> just laid it all out on the table and the audience went silent um, yeah and then nice and then they just tried idea. to laugh it off as well the the host yeah. of, well, you would though, innit? Like in, in an interview with like Jimmy Fallon or something, if a scientist came on and was like, yeah, um, I don't know, metal is actually like the corrosion on metal is going to take over and kill us all. You'd be like, shut up. You know, it, it just sounds <laughs> stupid. Like, you know, the guy coming on saying fungus, you're like, what, that mold that just grows on the wall? Like, you know, get over it. But yeah, no, it's, it's a really, really fun way to, to kind of bring it in. I think it was cool, cool mm-hmm. decision to bring it in. I think every episode has started with, obviously no spoilers, every episode has started with something new or like a, a flashback or something so that every beginning of every episode, because they don't get in the game, you don't get that kind of step away and come back moment because everything is just, you know, you can keep playing as long as you want. So the fact that every week you've got to go away and come back, they were like, this is such a good opportunity to introduce something new every episode that the, the, the gamers haven't seen because there's only two types of audience. They've got people who have played the game and people who haven't. And it's, you've got to kind of cater to both. But yeah, they balanced it very, very well with them with them opens like the second yeah. one in particular that you just good. mentioned is probably my favorite cold open it's so good so so good. and i think that's another good point to touch on because i know that when with this um sort of transfer from like gaming to like screen um kind of came about with the last of us i think it was a big thing of it was going to be a film and then they were like it's going to not then it fell through then it's going to be a tv show i'm think that they found the perfect medium for it like something like this needs to be a tv show i think a film i'm not saying it still couldn't have worked but it just wouldn't have been as as justifying i would say like this justifies its own existence because like even as fraser mentioned direct it the movie who sam raimi so neil Druckmann and sam raimi met up and had a whole thing about it like Mm. um sony was keen behind them and like they were proper pushing it they had Maisie Williams uh, from Game of Thrones. Oh, yes. Yeah, yep, I remember. Her as Ellie. And the problem was that Raimi kept saying, how do we make it bigger? How do we make it bigger? And Druckmann was kind of like, it doesn't need to be bigger. It needs to be what it is. The story is there. We need to make that story. But Raimi wanted to make it blockbuster big, you know, like mm-hmm. essentially it was going World War Z and Druckmann just stepped the away. The thing about like, films as well, they kind of have to follow a formula. So you'd probably end up with things being lost and, you know, you've got your set up, like the middle, you've got like the bit before the end and then obviously the final kind of fight. And I mm-hmm. think that would that would have cut a lot of yeah. content. Whereas doing it this way, they obviously, obviously get to add more. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, they, they made the right choice there. I much prefer than making it a series like the way they've done it like, you've got you can make however many seasons you can of it obviously they're going to milk it because this is already doing insanely well it's being watched by like near enough every single person on the planet and mm-hmm. it's like if it was a movie then how can you have like all that detail all that story and compress it into like a two hour tops kind of movie you can't you can't do that there's too much in there but when you split it up like this, especially when it's done by HBO, and HBO have big budgets, and this is a big budget thing. They've done it so much justice. I'm, I'm glad that they've done it the way they've done it. It's so good. 
Yeah, so. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I think if they had made it into a movie, <clears throat> that it would have had that exact problem of what do we cut? And it's, you know, instantly the moment you start cutting things, you're just cutting away the story, you're just cutting away the characters, you're cutting away the arcs, you're cutting away the beautiful development of, of every single moment of that of that game. And mm. I think that's the problem is that there's such a strong support for the game. And, and it's mostly for people in our generation because it did come out in like uh, 2013, I think. So like not a lot of young generation have played that game because they were too young or whatever. So a lot of people our age have played it. And so we are like the target audience to kind of talk good about it and promote it. So mm. it was a lot of boxes for them to tick and they managed so far. I mean, I think this has been the best zombie show I've ever seen. And ooh, I mean, ooh, Walking I mean, Dead is great, but this is already passing it for me. For the sake of uh, not getting any uh, sort of clash back in the comment section, Charlie, I think you mean infected. Well, I said zombies with one of these thingies. Oh, yeah, oh I, I, should, I, should, I can't, I can't, can't see that. So, I can't see that. Uh, Joey air quotes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Even though, like, there was, I think that kind of zombie phrase or like phase that we kind of went through the past couple of years has kind of died out. I think it's it's come at a good time. And yeah. the way the last of us is, it doesn't lean too heavily on it. Yeah. Um, no. So, yeah, no. It, it, yeah. I think it's. It's the world that they're in that kind of informs what they go through rather than what's like the world itself being the main sort of story driving point because it's even apart from infected or zombies or things of that nature. It's just like what society's come to, what the government's doing about it, um, how people have banded together and created their own little rebel groups and whatever and their own shit. And it's how just two people are just trying to walk from A to B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just go through it, and that's that's the point. That's the focus. That's where the focus should be. And I'm glad. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is either one of the first or the only game adaptation where the director of the game has transferred to whatever the new medium is. Because mm. Neil Druckmann is, is directing as well, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, writing and directing alongside yeah. Craig Mazin, who done Chernobyl. Oh, okay. So, oh shit. Okay. Mm. Interesting, uh, interesting story with Craig uh, Mazin. He he was m a massive fan of Last of Us. Like he played the game and he absolutely loved it. And apparently Neil Druckmann's quite uh, introverted. Like he doesn't really talk much. He's you know he's he's quite he does his own thing. So Craig was constantly just trying to make contacts to to meet him. And um, he basically stalked Neil <laughs> until he got until we got a reply and he was like, I really want to work on this show with you. Like, this is the only show I want to do. Cause Sony were chasing Craig as well about doing other game adaptations. And he was like, what about the last time? And they're like, well, Neil's got that. And he's like, mm, I need that, <laughs> I need that show. And yeah, eventually they, they met up and they had some wicked talks about it. And yeah, they kind of both agreed That's to do cool. it together. Yeah, it's a really, it's really well formatted. And I think honestly, Neil Druckmann is someone who has just got such a beautiful mind, the way he thinks about things. And you can see it in the episodes, like the way that things fall, but Craig Mason is there to keep things like TV, you know, to make sure it's a format in the way of TV. But Neil Druckmann is there for this pure, beautiful kind of scope of everything in that world. He just knows every single detail. He knows every single thing. And he's happy to just change this to make this more like this. And it's in, it's really really cool like some of the arcs in the uh the the symmetry of the episodes has been so cool mm -hmm. we could treat this like an ad break we need an ad break sort of song like a moment you know like a have you recently lost your daughter to a gun wielding militia stopping you from escaping a city overrun with a virus outbreak well, grieve no more. Here at Daughter Replacement Limited, we thrive on giving our customers the best daughters they could ask for. Our daughters come completely immune to fictional viruses, provide hilariously awful puns, and can stab your enemies. So why wait? Order your Daughter Replacement at Daughter Replacement Limited today. New daughters can be shot and killed and may also be gay. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of, I assumed from the very get-go with this show, especially with its pacing in the first episode, that they were going to do, like, two or three seasons to at least do one game. Um, no. But I think they're actually going to get through it in one season. Like, and it's, it doesn't seem rushed, which is crazy. But mm. they I, have said I, they want to do one season per game. But if you think about one game game, is, 
No, but one game is Last of Us is eight to ten hours, right? No way. Last of Us is like a twenty five to thirty hour game. Okay. No, I don't know about that. I don't know twenty thirty, maybe like maybe twenty. Hold on, hold on. If you're really that's, 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 <laughs> that's a big on that like, I mean, considering where the last episode was. Okay, so it says averagely how long they've got left to go. The, there's no way they're gonna get to the end of this season. Oh, yeah, that's vital. No way. Do, do we know how many episodes are there gonna be for this season? Yeah. How many? I think they said ten, didn't they? On now it says nine. Nine, okay. Nine, nine. Okay, I think that's doable because it says it takes 14 hours to finish the main story of The Last of Us Part 1. And that's considering oh. stealthing, shooting, chasing, the game mechanics. If right. you maybe hit so, all the main beats. Yeah. An maybe hour actually, per episode. Because, yeah. Mm. yeah, you are missing like the tutorial. Like That whole thing was kind of fleshed out, which in episode one, I mean, this, I'm trying to stay on episode one, but <laughs> it's so interesting how they done the, um, the 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 idea of like the quarantine zone and stuff like that. Like in the game, that's where you're learning to walk, you're learning to move yeah. and stuff and shoot. I think you do as well in the quarantine zone. And mm-hmm. there's like all this learning. Whereas in the quarantine zone that we see, this guy's just throwing dead throwing dead children on a fire. Like it's it's yeah. such a small thing, but it instantly just makes you go, "That's where he is. I got it." You know, I've got it. He's yeah. just burning bodies for a living in a in a safe place run by someone else. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. it's very well done. And it was five minutes. But do you think, think it's only well done because we've played the game and we, because we know from the game side where everything is at? For someone who's not watched the show at all and they just jump straight into it, is that going to be clear? Well, I've spoke to a few people who have, who have not played the game. Um, so my sister Rosie's never played it. And there's a new guy, Ollie, at work who hasn't who hasn't played the game. Both of which are watching it. Both of which are absolutely in love with it. So I think they're doing well for people yeah, who haven't played the game. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, like they're really into it. So it's definitely. I think it's definitely taking all the Walking Dead's fan base and just going, okay, this is kind of probably what you wanted. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, it is. It's kind of <laughs> what we wanted. Thanks. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. What about the casting, guys? Let's let's go through the casting. Yeah, so, how yeah. are we finding Bella Ramsey as Ellie? You know what? Yeah. Go on. If we're sticking to episode one, yeah, I wasn't sold. I wasn't sold on Ellie. Like, um, I was sold on Pedro as Joel. It, it took a little bit of convincing, but before everything came out, I was kind of convinced. Episode one as Ellie, I wasn't convinced, but the last episode that just that just happened on Monday. That was when I was like, "Yep, yeah, okay, I'm sold on Ellie. I'm now, I'm now an Ellie fan, for sure." Yeah, yeah, that's completely fair. I think I was very similar. I didn't like the idea of Bella Ramsey, but she has sold it for me. <laughs> what about you, Fraser? What do you think? Yeah, I think she's. I think she's got the um, the character. I like like Rick said. I think in the first episode, I still wasn't sold. I think it's it's growing. I think it's still growing on me. I yeah. think she kind of looks like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> She does have that deadpan face a little bit, doesn't she? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like in a weird way, but yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, she's she's playing the character that well. Yeah, she's she's actually age, but a bit more mature. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah. Think... Do you know she's actually nineteen? <laughs> really? Isn't it? Yeah, she don't look it. She's gonna yeah. be one of them actors that just don't age. She's gonna be playing kids for the rest mm. of her life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which work? I mean, we get to see. You know, she might be able to do flashbacks and all that, and they would de-age her very easily. You know, I think it, it it should work well for the idea of the show and its back and forthness. With but I'm, I'm I think they're going to keep tapping into her. What was it? The DLC wasn't it for the first one? Is it left behind? Riley. Yeah. 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 So I think they're going to flash back to that. Mm. Mm. So that would be that would be quite fun to watch because I, I don't think I played all of that. I think I'd just done. No, I was at yours, sir, and we were playing it on the hardest mode. And you were like, yeah, yeah. Play, th- play this mode. I can't remember what it was called. What was it called? Grounded. Grounded. Yeah. He was like, play, try Grounded with the yeah. DLC. And I didn't get past the first Infected. <laughs> I yeah. Died, like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I still playing it. So I don't I, uh, I, I went through that obsession for a while. I, it took me... Well, 
if, if the game average, it took me, let's say, about a month or so to finish, if I'm really committed, it took me probably about three times that length in grounded mode. But I think I finished it twice in grounded mode. No way. That's yeah, I, I, I hustled. No, but do you know what it was? I had to get so used to the function of the game, the form of the game, like the layout. So I, after a while, I knew exactly who was going to come out where. I still remember the last level. You know, obviously, when Joel is running to get her from Spoilers. the hospital room. Spoilers, just for anyone who hasn't watched or play, who hasn't played the game and hasn't seen the last episode yet. <laughs> should, should, we, should we not talk about this sort of stuff? Should we not go that far ahead? Um, we should stick to the first no, talk about it. Maybe maybe stick to the first. You can, you can talk mean, about DLC. Yeah. All right, let, all right, let's just put this yeah. way. Uh, certain <laughs> parts of the level took me uh, weeks to get past. I'm talking minutes worth of gameplay took me weeks until I got used to it. So that's all I'll say. In terms of casting, I was, well, me and Charlie were talking about this before. I didn't mind Pedro Pascal because I thought you've got it in you as an actor, but I thought, am I going to be able to unsee you and see Joel? Like, you're a celebrity, can I unsee you? Sometimes a celebrity doesn't do it justice because you see them. And it was one trailer that came out where I heard his voice. And when I heard his voice, I was like, okay, I get it. He can do it. He, 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 sat, he gave me that essence. With yeah. Ellie, I haven't seen enough of her in episode one as an actress. But because from you guys, when we were talking beforehand, you were like, no, 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 she kind of grows on you. I gave it more of a chance. Her mannerisms, I think, and, and in, like the way she encapsulates the, the, act, the, 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 the role, yeah, 100%. I still haven't associated her face with Ellie's 100% yet, but I've only watched one episode, so I can't, I no. can't assimilate to her so quickly. That's fair. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people who are in the game that are also in the show. Um, 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 Marlene? Mar um, Marlene, yeah. Is it Marlene? Marilyn? Something like that. Yeah, Marlene, I think you're all right. Yeah, yeah. She's, um, she was the actual person who played Marlene in the game. Uh, and she, did, she auditioned not, not thinking she was going to get it because she's quite um, built in real life, whereas in the game she's quite slen uh, slender. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, she still got it because they were like, no, you're, you're kind of her. You are the perfect person to play her. Um, but I mean, no spoilers because uh, we haven't seen them yet. But Troy is meant to be in it, and um, oh. oh my god, the the girl who plays Ellie is in it. Um, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, that would be and good. Ashley Johnson. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, uh, they're all. Yeah, they're, a lot of them are in it. I mean, most recent episode we have seen the guy who voiced Tommy. Um, without Ooh. spoiling it, it's kind of hard to say who he plays, but big beard. Really? He, he, vo he voiced Tommy in the games. Oh, oh really? shit. Yeah, so like they're, oh, they're oh, all man. very keen to be involved in the podcast. Troy hosts the, pod the official podcast with uh, Neil Druckmann and, uh, and uh, Craig, uh, um, what's his name? Craig Mazin. So yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. They're all pumped about it. They are also okay. so psyched to, to even be I involved think, with it. Wow. I think that makes sense because in the, you know, the, the guy who wrote the music for the games. What's his name? Not Giovanni. Gio oh, Guillermo. Guillermo, yeah. Guillermo. Guillermo. But anyway, he was... Guillermo or Gustavo? Gustavo. Gustavo. I, Gustavo. So I think Gustavo yeah. came up with the original guitar, but I think Guillermo was the one that added the oomph to it. Well, when you got Spotify, the, it's both their names. So it's, yeah, so the, the, the original composer for the first and second game uh, stars... Uh, in the second game, so you can see him in the game basically. Oh, cool! So I'm like, I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he's sitting on um, just on a, on a little chair, just playing the guitar with his dog. Nice. Um, so I'm like, nice. if they've done it that way around, then it would make sense that they're going to be enthusiastic to do it the other way. And I think everyone involved in this game would have been more than I reckon it would have been more than just a job for them. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, first episode, we have to talk about it. Sarah's death. No. No, no, no. Okay. You're okay. You're okay. Move your hand, baby. Move your hand. No! Oh. I know, baby. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it hurts. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. Come on, baby. You're okay. You're okay. I know, I know, I know, I know, baby. I know, I know. I know this hurts. You're gonna be okay. 
All right. Baby, 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 listen to me. I gotta get you up, okay? I gotta get you up. All right? You come on. You come on. I know, baby. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Tommy, help me! Joe. Come on, baby girl. Come on, baby girl. I gotta get you up. Come on. Come on, get up. Come on, baby girl. How did it hit you in comparison to how oh, it hit you with the game? It hit the same. It hit the yeah. same. Like, yeah. it, like, in okay. the game, it, you don't, yeah. you're not expecting it. And it takes you and you're kind of like, oh shit. Especially for the first time you play the game and you go through that. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. And you have like the whole transition to kind of get used to it. Knowing that it's coming and you still kind of go through it. They kind of kept it near enough exactly the fucking same as the game. So, um... Yeah, man. Straight got teary. Yeah, Goosebumps was like, nope, did not like that. That was that hit. That definitely yeah. hit. Yeah, I completely agree, mate. Yeah, what about you, Fraser? Having, having, having played it, no, there's no difference to having watched it. It still hits you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, the acting you know is fantastic <laughs> as well. The little girl uh, playing Sarah is phenomenal. She's done it so yeah. well. And Pedro as well. Credit all round to everyone. Leo was so good in that in that scene. I think what was the strange feeling of going from like I've played it because that gaming is that weird sense of it's like watching a film but you're going through it. It feels personal, but you're watching someone else go through it all at the same time. It's that sort of world in between. So it was almost that weird sensation of like not like oh, I'm watching something painful. It's almost like that feeling of I know I've been there. Even though I could never have gone there and I've never been there, I was like, I know what you're going through, man. I, I get it. I, I've been you in a weird alternative way and it was this weird feeling. But yeah, I... 100%, yeah. Fucking bored, mate. I bored my eyes out and I was like, okay. All right, Jesus. Yeah. I think they've done very well to separate... Because um, obviously when you're playing the game, you're Joel, as you said. like you, You've gone through it. You've lost your daughter. You feel like you've you ruined the mission. You ex almost expect it to end and go, you failed and, you know, go back to the start. And um, they've done really, really well to make the audience follow them rather than just mm -hmm. her. You know what I mean? You are, you're no longer Joel, but you are still going through it with him anyway. And like, I think, yeah. That, yeah, I think the fact that they've done very similar shots to the game and, you know, really played it out, just added little bits extra, like the, 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 the infected in the diner when they're running through and he's holding her. And how it's mm -hmm. leaping over the chairs and everything just little details like that you know that weren't in the game definitely add to that kind of they're gonna be fine you know if they can get away from, they're gonna be fine they're gonna be fine they're gonna be fine and then that happens and you're like oh no what's yeah. happened you know and mm -hmm. even as a new watcher i can imagine you yeah. feel exactly the same yeah. yeah it's cool i think i remember that feeling of being surprised as a gamer up until the point because the last of us as, as a game broke me and then put me back together again and even changed the way i <laughs> I, I view games I remember two things, and as you said it perfectly, Chaz, I thought, okay, well, his daughter's died. Like, it feels like it should be over. I feel like this is the end of the game. What am I doing at this point? And then 20 years later, not a year, not a month, not a week, not even 10, 20 years later, and as a game, I was like, you don't see that. I was like, what, what, what what's happened? What? And I, don't, I can't say what it feels like to watch that as a show. I think that formula is a bit more normal in a show than in a game, but it, it, it's still... I don't know, it, it, it still took me by surprise uh, to still kind of view that as, as a viewer of a show, like, oh, we're jumping 20 years. Like, there is just mm. so yeah, much to you know catch that, up on. It's a very good point, mate, that in games, you rarely ever have a time jump like that. It's something so real, you know, where, where yeah. you're starting something 20 years before your actual character storyline is about to, to continue. I remember, I, I remember when that, that was a big thing, going, wait, what? 20 years? hang on 20 west so that was just fuck that was just origin shit i was just yeah, damn just okay and you know it was quite it was a really nice feeling <coughs> yeah i completely agree mate I think it really sort of keeps you even though you don't really know what it's been like from in those 20 years it's, it still keeps you tied to the character in that way whereas usually the way shows do it 
you'll start off with him at that point and then maybe he slowly reveals what happened to him 20 years ago. I yeah. think it's mm. it's almost a more af- effective acro- uh, approach to keep you tied to the characters. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, could have easily gone flashbacks and stuff. Mm. But yeah, obviously from the get-go, they knew that that was how they were going to drag you through this horrible mm. event. They weren't going to just give you little hints of how'd you get that watch or you know was you the father mm, you know they yeah. just went no you are gonna fucking go through it and then we you'll get it <laughs> yeah we will leave you and I, we'll come back to you in 20 years <laughs> yeah, yeah now just let that settle then three words will come up on the screen and you could just feel that you have gone through that 20 years yeah, of surviving yeah. with that fucking burden you know just knowing that you oh, yeah. failed and or feeling like you failed yeah 100 percent agree that 20 years jump is big I think one thing I did like that they, again, the small elaboration, I feel like what they've added on and what I'm understanding from you guys is everything has like a purpose that they've added on. They, if they've taken it as an opportunity to uh, create more lore than just let's add it on and uh, pad it and make it longer. It was like the bit where, <clears throat> the scene where obviously uh, him, like Joel, Ellie and Tess get stopped by the, the security guy and is testing them. And that's the first time you find out that Ellie is affected and she's trying to convince them that blah, blah, blah. Obviously, in the game, it's more focused on Tess and Joel and being like, what the, what the fuck are we doing? Are we being ambushed? Are she going to turn? Whereas that is the moment where they added on in the show was the guy obviously has the gun and the light facing him. And then it kind of transitions to the memory of his daughter. And you could see that sort of that traumatic trigger in him. And that's where he just goes fucking crazy, smashing his face. In. And I think that's where you get where... He, Joel's now got the reputation of being such a fucking beast because mm-hmm. that that that's what's reinforcing that level of adrenaline. And, and rather than focusing on the scene of I, I'm not I'm not infecting it all, you hear it in the background. All you see is just Joel sort of just spaced out almost, and he kind of comes back to reality. And they're like, right, we need to go, we need to go, and then we have to carry on. That was such a beautiful ad because I'm like, yeah, this guy has gone through some shit. Like, justify it jump back to it because like you said you've earned that right because you showed it to us in the beginning mm, yeah. so yeah pull from it you know show it and i really like it was such a small drop of in the ocean of, of the whole episode but i really appreciate that yeah that it, scene it really shows you that um you didn't just go 20 years and it's forgotten yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He, it, went... he is part of that rage and yeah and sadness yeah. Yeah. but we just watched it as well as an audience it's not been 20 years. We've just watched it. Like like you said, if they would have just forgotten about it, I would have not wasted my time, but kind of demotivated me to the rest of his, uh, his motives. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I feel emotional. Okay. Do you know, <laughs> bringing up that scene with the man with the, the guy with the gun, uh, the, the drug addict with the gun, mm. and the, the kind of skip to uh, the part, like the flashback scene, that had to come because you don't actually see Joel being violent at all in that whole quarantine zone. Like, whereas us as the gamers, we were killing people left, right and centre, even like, you know, or not in the quarantine zone, but th- with the whole um, beef between uh, some of the, I was the Fireflies and... Uh, oh, and when they go... And shit. Yeah, when, bit, they go, shit, when they go, they when they go to find the guy. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you've already had a load of shootouts and stuff with people and you've probably come across some infected by that point. And so to just kind of go, no, 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 hold back. We're going to give Joel this one moment that's going to make the audience go, oh yeah he's a fucking psycho yeah he's a beast he is that guy and that scene is shot for both him and for ellie because you see ellie kind of just like digging it she's digging it she is like this guy is going to fucking protect me he has no gun he just jumped on a man with a gun and beat him to death and and ellie is fully just like this is my guy you know it's just a really nice moment they put in there I think, even speaking to the character, obviously, I think they asked, I was watching an interview with Troy years ago, and they were comparing his characters that he's played, and, you know, what do you think of this? And, what do you, and they were like, well, who do you think would win in, in, in the plethora of characters that you've played? Obviously, this guy's played, like, supernatural and superheroes and villains and shit, and he was like, Joel. 
And they're like, really? They're like, yeah. He goes, I really believe because nothing would stop that man if he really put his mind to it. And I was like, fuck, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Troy is um, Troy is an absolute advocate for that, for everything Last of Us. I mean, he's basically almost as important and as Neil Druckmann. So, you know, he's, mm. he's, he is constantly, constantly celebrating The Last of Us to everyone. Like every YouTube video I've ever seen him on, it's always, he always referenced Last of Us because he just fucking loves it. He's, I think he's got a tattoo of it. Um, you know, you it, know what? It's, it's a big part of him. Yeah. Oh, it's a fantastic performance from him as well. I, for the first time in my life, and I never thought I'd be this person. And I know I've integrated into other things, but I was like, you know what? This thing has been with me for so long. And trying to explain to, like, Tanya, who's never played the game, trying to explain to her how important this is for me. Because she was like, just watch it on your phone if it doesn't work on the laptop. And I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, it can't, it can never, it can't, it's not like that. It, and hearing myself be so passionate, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, you know what? I would really get a Last of Us tattoo. I, I really would blend it into something. But I was like, it wouldn't scare me to get close to that. That's how much it means to me. And I, oh, mate, uh, like it sounds yeah. silly, but I, I get you because the, the Last of Us isn't just a game, right? Like for our generation, especially when this game came out, it wasn't just you know a, a PlayStation game. This was like a full-on experience. It was like this was a journey that you went through, and you was like in emotional turmoil. And they've they've done the same thing with the show. Like everything is so spot on. Like you feel the same shit that Joel and Ellie are feeling throughout it. Like, you 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 experience their relationship and the way it grows throughout the episodes. So, yeah, man, like, getting a tattoo of it, yeah, fucking, like, why not? It's not just a kiddie kind of thing. This is, like, a, a big, big fucking deal. Mm. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is, I think it is probably Sony's peak pride project, isn't it? It's, uh, I mean, they've got a lot of good games out there. Obviously, they've got Spider-Man and things like that, but I think this was one that just knocked it out of the park for, I think, was it like best game of the, of the year a few it, times on its it, remaster? I believe it got game of the year as well. Man. Yeah, no, I'm glad that you said that because it's true. I've, I've, I put, put PS4 on my head, but it's true. I originally played it on PS3. Yeah. And when I bought my PS4, it came with it. And that's when I experienced the DLC and I would happily buy it for PS5 as well. But um, yeah. yeah, I forgot that they remastered over and over. But the thing is, I know it's Sony's, it's under Sony's like ownership, but not in a bad way. They're a, they're a distributor, you know. And I know they they chose someone in that Sony corporation chose to say, yeah, let's green light this, let's fund it. But it's still not theirs. Like it's it's the people that made it. It's still Druckmann's, and I'm sure the writers and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, you got you do you know you do have to appreciate Sony and Naughty Dog also would have had massive inputs in what you can and can't do in a game. Yeah, true, you know, true, Neil true. Druckmann would be sitting there going, yeah, I want him to do this, I want it to be like that, and then they're probably going, you can't do that, you can't do this. Uh, we could do this instead, and you know, probably inspiring new ideas as well. So they are they are in the creative process, but no, one hundred percent, mate. It's a hunt. It's Neil Druckmann is literally this the entire thing. It's such a cool and inspirational thing to see a to see a writer create something that's just you. It could have been. It could have been anything. They could have made it into a book. Could have made it into a show. You could have done this trip, but they went for a game, and they just absolutely nailed that mm -hmm. audience. Like they, they, mm -hmm. yeah, the audience went crazy for it. You ready for a question of the week? Go on. Question dun, of the week. Dun, dun, dun. Hit it. In this world of The Last of Us, what kind of survivor do you reckon you would be, or if you even survived, do you? What do you think? Ooh. Oh, it's tough. Hmm. I think so. What, like, if we was in this type of society right now, as we are, and then things got to that point, what type of survivor? Who would I be in that moment? Yeah. So, an infection has broken out. There are obviously militaries and other factions forming, and you know, let's just say you've made it twenty years to the point where where we see we see Joel. Where do you think you would be the kind of person to join a faction, to join a, to join a society, and tr and live under again under rule under whatever? Or do you reckon you'd go out on your own? Do you reckon you build your own thing? No Fraser, go on, you start. You start. No spoilers, but I think <laughs> I'll be more like 
Because, yeah, <laughs> it's really hard not yeah. to feel. Um, yeah, I can see you being a bill. <laughs> I can feel it, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like just from seeing what happened in that episode that you were more safe if you just stayed in your house and didn't go out or wasn't outside. And I reckon I probably would have been at home when it when shit went down. Um, in the UK, it's, it's weird to think about because obviously... It's a bit different being in the US. Um, they got more space and different kind of communities. Uh, but yeah, if if I could hold out, like on my own in my own place, I would do that. Be kind of like go out and scavenge for things, come back, um, and just try and survive as long as possible that way. I think until I get bored, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. You would long. get bored. Mm. what do you think Rick I actually don't know man like I, I, if, I'm, if I'm going to be honest I don't think if you know if we were to stay in London and shit was to kick off I don't think I'd survive to be honest like we're clicking <laughs> and shit around I'm not running I'm not, I'm not going to survive from these fucking supersonic clicker people and no, no fucking chance but mm. if I was, I would probably be one of the kind of people to just stay in like a safe zone, like like Joel's community safe zone where the the, the Fedra people were, and just stay in, in something QZ, like that. Yeah. yeah, like in a QZ and just and just hold up there. I don't think so, I'd be to be like, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna go backpack across the country and shit. Nah, if I made it that far, which I don't think I would, I'd probably just play it safe. Cause yeah. fuck that. Nope. Sam? Um, I think it's. I think if things were as they were, yeah, probably. Obviously, because I live in Scotland, Scotland's got a bit more space in terms of land, and I live with someone that I love. So I'm like, I would try and meet the middle of what what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do that's best for us? And probably like Rikesh, I'd probably be want I'd lean more towards one of being in a community because I think not socializing would drive me crazy after a while of uh, just not talking to other people. But at the same time, I, I can't help but think of every sort of like horrible thing in the sense of I know what we would do, but then if we saw our loved ones being killed, would either be killed or fucking go crazy and become something if like if 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 somebody like that broke out and Tanya died and I'm alone in Scotland, I've got no friends and family physically in the distance, I'm coming to London. I'm coming to find you guys next and nothing's going to stop me because I'm like, what's the point? Like, what's, what am I sticking around for? So I kind of feel like that extreme, but if I had a choice, community, like 100%, or probably, hopefully not be dead. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, everyone hopefully <laughs> not be dead. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. should not be dead. Okay, all right. Let me ask you this then. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up because I've got to go in a bit as well. Well, I want to hear Charlie's answer. To, to oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry. I don't know. I wasn't answer. even thinking about it. I, it's fine. I'll I'll get it next time. <laughs> Come on, sir. What's your question? If you got bit and you knew you were infected and you knew you had I don't know how long, twelve hours before you were gonna change, what would you do in that time? And what would be your conclusion? Mm. I'd probably kill myself, mate. Yeah, so like yeah. Um, I might try and live out a little bit, but the thing is, it's 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 a bit like I feel like it'd be a bit like dementia, where you don't know when it's happening, and I would be scared that it would start happening, and I wouldn't be able to kill myself in time. So I'd probably just say quick goodbyes to anyone who's around me, and just be like, I'm going to go out to the back of the garden and just finish myself off in in a. <laughs> not sexual way. <laughs> Maybe a sexual way first. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Probably a sexual way first. Have one last. Why not? I was okay. thinking of like going up to like the top of a building or something and jumping off. But maybe what about if you waited until you turned and then maybe you fall off? I don't know. That might be yeah. A, yeah. But then would you fall if you turn? You, the survival instinct. If you, feel, the... if you feel yourself turning. And then jump off, and then maybe you've turned before you hit the ground. Well, interestingly, mate, the infected are still inside and they are still alive. Mm. So essentially, when you so this is something that, that Druckmann said about the games is when you're walking into a room and they're all standing there quiet, they're they're crying, and you can hear them sobbing. 
because the people inside are still there and they're still crying and they're still frightened and have no idea what's going on. But the parasite has taken over them completely, but they are still there. So you wouldn't actually avoid would have really know going through it, yeah. but I guess it would be a better way than going through it fully. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like more of a reason to want to kill yourself before you turn, right? Like wow. if you want I to mean, be trapped you, in your yeah. own body like that. That is horrible. Yeah, it's haunting, that, isn't it? That's, <laughs> that's just really made every view. every kill in the game so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> They're still in the world. They pose that question game? a lot. Are they in there? Oh. Oh. I think, yeah, I think 100% kill yourself. Uh, if, if I knew that to be the case, forget even being lost and confused and sad and alone. Like, oh, yeah, I get to watch me eat people or my loved ones. I'm like, no, nah, just end me. Just end me now, please. Uh, Actually, if I knew that I've been bitten and I'm going to turn, yeah, no, nah, I'd kill myself. Or, I don't know if you could die like this, as an infected, it was a way to kill yourself, is I would try and get so high off my ass of all the drugs I possibly could to OD. I would want to like just try and go so fucking transcendent, and then maybe combine it with phrases I do. Like I'll put myself on a roof, pop every pill I can. Maybe I'll lose track of things and just fall off. But uh, yeah, maybe if I had a gun, I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> I think. Oh, this has gone to a dark place. Okay. It's dark. <laughs> this is, that was dark. <laughs> I mean, it was. Suicide it? is kind of the best option, and so it instantly went dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like we're gonna have like a a, a suicide thoughts theme song. <laughs> Whenever we talk about suicide in these podcasts, we'll play a jingle. All right. <laughs> Just in case <laughs> anyone listening is in a bad place. Yeah, see if you can even keep it into the podcast. Be honest. <laughs> yeah. We, we might. Yeah. That was. <laughs> this is in the context of, of of the world building and the game. Obviously, in real life, we have many options and many directions we can take to get help. So this is not in reference to any of that. But um, yeah, it's good this is to know we get infected just... by a, a fictional creature. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, that. exactly. Don't... If you find that if you find that your nan is starting to bite you. Don't go to the end of the garden and finish yourself off. Yeah, don't, <laughs> no, don't, no, no, no. don't do that. Don't do that. She might be just teething. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's end it there. I think we're nearly up on time for Zoom okay. Thank right. you all for joining me and uh, Sahan and Fraser and Rikesh today. It's always fun and good to see you boys. Yeah, mate. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm Charlie. I'm Rick. I'm Fraser. And I'm Charlie. Oh, for fuck's ah. sake.